Hello and welcome back to the Saints FM series. As you can see, it's August 7th and it is time for our first game against Palace at home. But it's been a pretty interesting transfer window, so let's get into it. So we're going to start with our departures. And I did say uh, around the last season that Broy is probably going to be moved on. And he's gone to Saudi. He's gone for $34 million, um, which is a pretty good price. You know, we made $15 million off him in a season and a half. So that's pretty good, for, in my opinion. He just never kicked on. Like, he had a little spurt at the start of last season. He scored like 4-3 and three or something like that. And then he just fell off and did nothing all season. So I'm not going to be upset by selling a player for $34 million who's just not firing. Our next one was Fabio Carvalho. It's the exact same thing. He just is, he's just not good. Again, really poor performances over the two seasons. We bought him for quite a lot. He was our club record signing, for God's sake. And he was just shit. So, yeah, we sold him. We moved him on. 40 million is a fucking great deal to Saudi again. And before anyone says, oh, you're just abusing Saudi. You're just abusing Saudi. Not true. Fabio Carvalho actually initially had an offer of 37.5 million from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Broya had another offer for about 30 mil from a few clubs around Europe. I just went for whatever the highest bid was. Simple as that. But in reality, to take out the Saudi clubs, we still make a ton of money off them. So I don't want to fucking hear it. Next out was Sila. Um, he was a good player for us. I'm not going to lie. He was a pretty good player for us for the amount we spent. 5 mil. He did very well, sort of being the second choice behind Alcaraz. He did fine. But I just thought it was time to move on. It was time to upgrade him. Um, so he's moved to Sunderland for 27 mil, who are in the Premier League recently promoted. But again, he was sort of average, but not a bad signing. But that profit of 22 mil is fantastic. Now, this one is interesting. I actually did decide to sell Dominguez because, again, really underperformed this season. It's not exactly his fault, but every away game was basically a loss, and he mostly only played in the away games in the system we created. So, I blamed it all on him. Nah, um, in, all, in all seriousness, he just wasn't good. Simple as that. And I thought we could sell him um, when we can replace him for the money. So it is what it is. See you later. We also sold Zach Alwi. Um, he's been on loan for a majority of his career at Southampton, you know, under me. And he's just never going to be involved. Like, he's never going to play a pass in the team. And I was like, 20 mil, fucking awesome. But he actually did reject 24 mil. There was a 24 million offer from Mines, and he rejected it like a fucking dickhead. So he had to settle for 19.25. But again, for a player that we didn't even sign, who was just sitting in the academy to get 20 mil out of him was pretty good. So I'm happy with that. And we also signed this youngster. Now, this youngster I signed for 900k. And I did sign a lot of youngsters for around the 1 million mark just to boost up the academy. And at the end of the day, if someone's going to offer, it, it could rise to 9 mil as well, depending on how he performs. But if someone's going to fucking offer me potential 9, but guaranteed 7 mil for a guy bought for 900k two years ago that I actually don't think is going to make it. I mean, he has good stats, but his potential could be there. But again, we bought him when we were in the championship. Like We're now a top half Premier League team. He's not going to be good enough for us, I don't think. So we sold him for a good chunk of change, so I'm happy with that. But now, that's all the departures. Let's look about... The signings. There's some interesting ones. So our first one is Sara from Norwich City. We got him for free. Um, he's been on my radar for quite a few seasons. But again, their asking price is ridiculous. It was like 40, 50 mil. I was like, he's not a 40, 50 mil player. But his contract finally ran out. No one wanted him. I was like, you know what? I'll sell Sila and get Sara in as his replacement. Because they play a similar role. So he signed. He's a pretty good player. Um, he's just going to be a squad player. But may push into the first team. If I don't sign a sentiment in this window. And we also signed Callum Hudson Odoi from relegated Leicester City. He did pretty well in the Premier League uh, when they got promoted. I was initially trying to sign him when we first got promoted, but 40 mil back then was a bit too steep, so we couldn't really get him in. This time I've decided, you know, we sold Fabio Carvalho for 40 mil. Might as well get a replacement in who's good. And he looks pretty good, so hopefully him and Odozi can cook on the left hand side. And this guy. When I tell you I'm fucking excited about someone, I'm excited about this guy. The 18-year-old Iranian lad from midfield. He's a wonder kid. I found him last season, and I got him for 2.2 million as a release clause. 2.2 million. He's already a decent champion, oh, championship, Premier League level player, and he has massive potential. And he's obviously got good stats. 16 passing, 17 first start, 17 off the ball. He's quick for a sentiment. Good decisions, good composure, good technique. Like, he's a good bloody player. So he potentially may slip into where Dominguez was, potentially, because he is bloody good for an 18-year-old. And we also signed this guy as well, another really good sentiment, not as cheap, 24 mil last season. Another really good player. I'm trying to get him out on loan because I feel like he's not as good as the Iranian guy, but still he's very good. 
So he may stay as well. Um, but if we do sign the centre mid, he will 100% leave. But other than that, he may play a role this season. And now, for a club record signing. You heard that right. And I'm talking not not 30 point, 31 mil that we got for No, no, no. This is bucks, mate. This is ridiculous money. It took a lot of convincing on my side to pay up. But I thought... A striker is something we've needed for years and years and years. Mara does a decent job. Dia did okay. Breuer was shit. Um, Ross Stewart never did anything. Che Adams never did anything. Adam Armstrong didn't do anything centrally. And I thought, we need a striker to take this team to the next level. And fucking hell did I come across an absolute crackhead at 19 years age. And he's only, I oh know, he turned in January. Look at the fucking stats. He's decently quick. I am going to try to train that up. Maybe get 15 pace out of him. Would be good. Brilliant technique. Brilliant work rate. Brilliant passing. Brilliant finishing. Brilliant finishing. Brilliant first touch, I mean, and finishing. And dribbling. Absolutely ridiculous player. He's 200. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know he was that tall. He's 200 centimeters tall. What the Christ? I've signed Harland Regen. Fuck me. This guy has got a bag of potential. Absolute bag. He is destined to be fucking world class. Now you're thinking, how much did you buy him for? And that's the concerning thing. 65 mil. And that's not even it, mate. That's 65 mil guaranteed. Guaranteed 65 million. But there's also 20 million of add-ons if he gets 50 appearances of 50 goals. So really, if he's a success at the club, if he's a success, it goes up to 85 and we bought him from Aston Villa. But I'm going to be absolutely honest with you. I genuinely think this guy's going to be one of the best strikers in the world in a few years. 100% guaranteed. His stats are ridiculous at 19. He's got more potential to grow into. He's only three star. He's only three star. He's still got at least one and a half stars to grow. 100%. I mean, he is world class potential. Unfortunately, though, he got injured. He pulled his calf muscle about three days ago just before the start of the season. So he's going to miss the first, what, three games most likely, which is a shame. I wanted to start him and really get him involved early. But he looks unbelievably good. I've taken a massive risk buying for this because we will not make profit off this guy if he flops. We will not make profit. So let's hope that he, <laughs> that he pops off. But the fact that his value is so ridiculously high as well, he's listed as a wonderkid now that we've signed him. His stats are good. His potential is good. I am absolutely convinced this guy's going to be world class. And that is what it stands so far in the transfer window. I am looking at Kubo. Let's look at Kubo. He is transfer listed again for 55 million. Now, I could pay the 55. We have the finances. We have 113 million transfer budget. But I don't think I want to pay 55 million, 60 million for Kubo. He's a brilliant player, but that's just too much for me. The other guy... I can justify spending that much because he's so young and so much potential and he's so good already. Kubo is 26. He's not going to get that much better. He's a great player. He's not going to get that much better. I am hoping... Now, the 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 rumored interest isn't that in crazy. If Crystal Palace come in and pay it, I'll just pay it, right? I'll pay it. Porto come in, I'll just pay it. But they're doing a loan, so I could probably beat him to that regardless. And then El Etihad... Probably have no chance whether I sign him or not. I mean, they'll pay him 600k a week. But I'm hoping that the lack of interest over the next two weeks before the end of the window, his value will drop how much they ask for him. If he gets to around 40 mil, I'll pay it no hesitation. But it's 55 to 60 is a bit too much for me. I cannot loan him as well because he was loaned here this season. They don't want him to be loaned to the same club, which is fucking annoying, but it is what it is. But yeah, that's the, uh, the Kubo is one of the players. I've also tried to get James or Prowse, but West Ham have no interest in selling. They were willing to sell for 40, 50, but I was thinking, oh, that's a bit much. And now they're not willing to sell at all. So Ward Prowse isn't coming. Maybe next season. But as you can see, what, what, I'm, what I'm proud about is that the growth of this team has been so good, but we've spent fuck all. Like we have an 80... Positive 80 million transfer uh, tra net spend. And that's brilliant in my opinion. I don't like overspending on players. That's why, like, Kubo, I'm not... I, I know he could do well for us, but I'm not spending 60 mil, 55 mil on him because it's just... he's That's overpriced. And then you're just going to say, you paid this guy overpriced. I don't think I did. I think I paid... Because I reckon that if we had waited another year to sign him, he probably would have gone up to 100 mil. And then 120, 150. So... It is what it is. Those are the signings so far this season. I am potentially looking at a centre mid, maybe a centre mid, maybe. I am looking at loaning a centre back in. I'm looking at loaning a defensive mid in just as pure cover. And then obviously Kubo. And then I'm looking at a right wing as well if we can get Kubo, Kubo or not. Otherwise, Dia may have to shift to the right. And then Mara and Montero 
will be the strikers for this season. Now, as you can see, we are lacking a bit of squad depth here um, with basically no players in the reserves. And that's where the lone players will come in. Hopefully, we can get maybe two or three to sort of just build out the squad depth. And maybe we'll sign another player. But this is the team as we host Crystal Palace on the opening day. I don't know if this... Because I've applied for a oh, work permit fucking... I don't know. I, exp I applied for a new one and it's not really done anything. So maybe he can't be on the bench. I'm not sure. Um, but this is the team. It's the same team as last season. Exactly. Uh, Sting's obviously starting because Kubo's not obviously here now. But no new signings are starting. The striker would have started probably, but he's injured. But this is the team. Let's go out there and get off to a good start. Yes, he can't play. So now we don't have a backup keeper. Whoops. Now we don't have a backup keeper because his work permit's not fucking working. So I have to bring up someone from the academy, I guess. All right, the youngster Lucas Yamete is on the bench now as our backup keeper because for some reason, Liz won't fucking get a work permit for some reason. Crystal Palace, Mitchell, Aronson, Aronson, off the bar, clear it, well done. Fucking hell, we escaped that. Chance to Kore with space, it's a crossbar again. Two crossbar strikes in two minutes. Walker Peters, well dribbled, good ball in. A dozy, a mistake in the back post. And we ju we survived two crossbars, and then we score a minute later. Brilliant. It's halftime. We're leading 1-0, and Palace's two shots out of their three were hitting the crossbar. That's mental. Stings is injured, which is the one position we don't want someone to get injured in. So we're going to put Dia on the right wing, and Sikumara is going to come in because... Oh, Hudson to do a really can't play right wing. Dia, lovely ball. Alcaraz, can we find Super Siku in the middle? Okay, Alcaraz. Okay, okay. I mean, if you're going to just not pass Samara, who's one-on-one, -on -one, you've got to score. Simple as that. All right, another corner. Doig near, near post again. Belikotchep. Collins doesn't tap it in. Ah, uh, that should have been two. We're absolutely dominating them in the second half. hudson Doig on the corner. Whips it in. Belikotchep. Deer at the edge. Deer. No, it's off the post. Goal. We need the second goal desperately. hudson Adoy with a lovely ball to Super Siku. He may be offside. Please don't be offside. We need the second. He's not offside. Come on, Super Siku. And that's full time. We've got off to a good bloody start. That second half was utterly dominant. First half we dominated, but it wasn't too crazy of domination. That second half was all over them. Good performance, good three points, and the home form continues. No fucking way. The game plan worked. The game plan worked. Kubo's Price is slashed to 24, and we are offering him right now for that. We are not hesitating. Five-year deal for Kubo. Hopefully, hopefully, we can get it done. Look at how, look how many lone players we have out scoring goals in the first weekend. We have so many good youngsters in the academy, and they're fucking cooking. All right, we've loaned in a defensive mid just to give us some cover. You know, last season we had to have Stevens play, and Dominguez had to play sometimes, so... We've loaned in Patrick Berg, really just as cover for that. We also loaned in another lad, Adam Wharton, who looks actually a pretty good player who can play sentiment and defensive mid again. So he's another player to sort of cover that defensive role in case we need it. But again, these guys won't play unless, like, they have to, you know? All right, the day has come where we have to play an away game. We're away to Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest won their first game as they bet Burnley away. This is the team. Sarah is playing with Alcaraz in midfield. Mara is getting a start. And other than that, it's the normal team. Hopefully this season, our away form isn't as fucking dreadful. Still alive. Still alive. Still alive. Oh my god, that should be 1-0 down. Please, can we just have an away performance where we play well? Alcaraz on the set piece. Adozi. Alcaraz. What are we doing? Fucking idiots, man. Plays Sarah. Sarah from distance off, off the bar. Jesus Christ. And it's halftime. There was Nottingham Forest only shot, but we haven't exactly been exciting either. Oh, these away performances are doing my head in. If we had won a few more of these games, we would have got Champions League. At the edge. What is this defending? Oh my God. We seriously cannot play away. There is poor defending. Ball in. hudson Adoy. Collins, it's over. Fuck. All right, corner ball. hudson Adoy. Alcaraz, no. Penalty! Yes! 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 Come on! Jesus Christ, man. We cannot play away from home. Alcaraz, please! Please slot this away. Yes! Come on! Carl Walker Peters, that I will allow a red card. I will allow it. Dia's in behind. Dia, can we find someone? 
Nice ball to Stings. Stings. Alcaraz. Hudson Adoy to Alcaraz. It's beautiful. Hudson Adoy. He's Kevin De Bruyne. How do you even see that pass? Come on. All right. I have to say the second half was far superior than the first half. We dominated them in the last sort of 25 minutes. Perfect. Hudson Adoy. Two bench appearances, two assists. He wants that starting spot. He prefers Alcaraz to Jude Bellingham. I, I, I don't mean to disappoint you, mate. If I had a choice, I'd take Jude Bellingham. No offense. All right, we have another loanee, a center half this time to give us some cover because I have decided to basically loan out all our good center back youngsters. Couldn't get uh, Levi Colwell on loan, unfortunately. But this guy's going to come in and be cover for us if any injuries occur. Obviously, we have Stevens as well as our fourth choice. But yeah, I just wanted to loan out the likes of Gomez and all that because at the end of the day, they need game time to improve. They're close. They may be a year away from being into the team, but they just need some game time. Here he is. It's Kubo. Come on, baby. Yes, I can't believe that's actually worked. For the first time, typically when I try and wait for someone's transfer fee to go down, someone else just comes in and swoops in for that fee. No one came in for Kubo. We got him for 24 million. What an absolute fucking bargain that is. Absolute bargain. 24 million for a player of his quality. He got top assist last year. Get him the fuck in. I'm loving this window. I'm having a great time. We've actually signed Pep Linders, obviously Jurgen Klopp's assistant manager in real life. His stats are fucking disgusting. He's coming in as a coach because these guys refuse to give me new coaches. It's annoying. And Dia's out for six weeks. Ah, oh, Christ, not this again. All right, this is the team. Obviously, Mara has to play because Dia's out. Hudson Adoy is getting his first start for the club. And that's about it. No more changes to the starting 11, but we are hosting a bogey team, numero uno, Villa. They've had an excellent start as well. Two wins, 4-0 at home to Burnley and 3-1 away at Leeds. Both had perfect starts. Can we finally get one over? One of our fucking bogey teams, man. I'm getting sick of it. Stings with the corner in. Balakotche back post. No one's there to tap it in. Douglas Louise in the free kick for Aston Villa. He's playing it. Oh my God, that's excellent. They may be offside, but that's fucking unbelievable goal. That tar assist is disgusting. And it's in. It's 1-0. First shot of the game for Villa, and it's fucking that. Walker Peters, Alcaraz, back to... Yes. Stings beats his man. Stings deflects off the post. Are you taking... These bogey teams have the most insane luck I've ever seen. It's halftime. They had one fucking shot. We've hit the post. I'm pissed, man. It's just... These guys are so impossible to play against. Corner ball. Hudson, 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 Adoy. That is such an ass corner. I think I need to change my set pieces. Hudson Adoy is still going. Hudson Adoy, it's in! Hudson! Yes! This guy has already got more goal contributions in this fucking, well, one start, which is only halfway in, and his two sub appearances in Fabio Carvalho had all last season. That's fucking excellent. Perfect start to the second half. All right, Stings picks it up. Stings. Palinia, Charles. Tamara. Good switch. Doig. Hudson Adoy, the danger man. That was one of the dumbest passes I've ever seen. Why did he do that? Oh, they're breaking away. That's a foul. Oh, that's Jeff Jam. How has he missed? Wait, is he saved? Bazunu saved that? Oh my god, I was certain that was in. Aston Villa creating something. It's in. Oh my god, I just made changes. I hate these fucking guys, man. I seriously can't stand these guys. Hudson Adoy with the corner. Bella Kopchev hits the post. These guys are so fucking lucky. Oh my god. Bro, it's just, again, it's just not fucking possible. How many times do I have to say it's not possible to beat these cunts? They barely have any chances today. They take their chances easily, except for one. And then they fucking hit, then we hit the post twice. Like, come on, man. All right, we play Stevenage in the Carabao Cup, and it's a completely rotated team, but Pedro Montero is going to make his debut. He is just fit in time to play this game, so we're going to give him a go and see just how bloody good he is. Obviously, Stevenage play in League 2, and they're struggling at the moment, but we need to get him off the mark, and hopefully he can be our main man for this season. Nice ball. Mo Pedro, Pedro gets it. Kubo picks it up. Sarah off the post. Unlucky. He's a big fucker, eh? <laughs> Look how tall he is, bro. Near post. Sarah again picks it up. Wharton wants an effort. What a goal from Wharton. On loan from Tottenham. And he gets his first goal for the club. 
Too far. Went to Adozi. Adozi into Sara. It's Sara. It's two. And it's as easy as that. I really want Montero to score. Right, it's half time. We need 2 0. We haven't been incredibly dominant. A lot of the ball. Not many chances. Montero's not scored yet. I'm a bit sad. Oh, give it away. Kubo to Pedro. He's announced himself. He's got his goal. And hopefully we have plenty more Pedros to scream this season. Dozy. There we go. Back to a dozy. It's a dozy. Oh, it's a great finish from Samuel. It's a great finish. It's 4-0. And that's full time and a very comfortable three points. Well, <laughs> no, it's not three points. It's a cup game. Yeah, nice. So we're actually going to sell Liz because he can't get another work permit application for another two and a half months. So there's just no point in being here. So we're just going to sell him. He's fucked off somewhere to Italy by the looks of it. We've drawn Burnley in the Carabao Cup at home. Okay, we'll take that. All right, this is the team to travel away to Bournemouth. Bournemouth's in 12th. They've won one, drawn one, and lost one so far. Hopefully we can bounce back with a win here. It's the A team, as you would expect. Montero drops to the bench, but obviously he's still not 100% fit, so he will probably come off the bench in this game. But let's hopefully get back to winning ways in the Premier League. Alcaraz to Doi, to Hudson to Doi. Back to Alcaraz. Alcaraz! Oh my god! So close. Find Stings. Stings to Alcaraz. To Sara! It's in! We have been fucking dominant tonight, and we've got our reward. Sara scores. Oh, it's fallen to Hudson and Doi. I thought he wasn't going to get there. Hudson and Doi still. Hudson and Doi still. It's a beautiful run. I was hoping he'd give a bloody penalty. Doi still got it. Mara! No, it's off the post. Oh, come on. Oh, it's a good ball. It's a good ball. And they've missed an absolute sitter. Chance for Bournemouth here. That's really shocking defending, and it completely against the runner play at their level. That is not good enough. Not good enough at all. Corner ball just before the half stings. Bella Kotchap, another good opportunity. It's half time. We've been fucking dominant, man. 16 shots in the first half. Mara's coming off. He's had a shocker, so Montero's going to come on and hopefully can do something special off the bench. Bournemouth with the ball in, and they're taking the lead. I can't believe what I'm fucking seeing here. How are we losing this game? Uh, oh, the away games. It's always the away games where we do shit like this. How are we so dominant in losing? This is unacceptable. Ubo, nice ball. Paulinia getting forward. That's a rarity. Paulinia. Oh, it's got to be. Pedro, what is going on? What is going on? Why has Kubo left it? Pedro turns around and then hits the post. Oh, my God. The away game performances are just so stupid, man. Walker Peters, that is the dumbest thing you could possibly do in that situation, is to press there. So dumb. <laughs> How do we lose these games? Uh, d d d away in this, being away in this fucking season at the moment. Same as last season, just fucking ridiculous. How are we losing? Adozi crosses it in, surely. Crosses it in, surely. How? Away games are impossible to win. This is just absolute fucking proof. What is that? It's just ridiculous. It is just ridiculous, our away performances. Nice ball. Doig into Hudson Adoy. He's going to go himself. Kubo scores. Four minutes left. I, I can't. I don't know what you want from me here. 24 fucking shots. XG of four, and we've scored two. We've hit the post twice. Alcraz has missed from six yards. I oh, just, I can't, I cannot believe this fucking team. It is impossible to win away games with this team, regardless of how well we play. We had 16 shots in the first half, and it was one all. Brilliant. Gavin Bazuna's injured. Oh, Christ. Now we have to play that youngster. Oh, brilliant, mate. I'm loving this. We spent the most money in the transfer window. That is difficult to do. Clearly, no one spent 100 mil one player, but Everton as well, spending an absolute shit ton. They bought Kone for 64 million, which was a big, big chunk of it. But you've got to realize, hey, guys, hey, 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 let's not forget. We sold 160 mil worth. Um, the other guy was technically signed before July, so plus 65 mil to that. We're still below, okay? All right, well, we're rotating the team as we play Burnley at home in the Carabao Cup because we have Brighton a couple of days. 
I'd much prefer to get points on the board in the Premier League. I think we should be able to do well regardless. I mean, the team's not bad. Pedro obviously getting another start. Adozi, Sara, Kubo is our front three. We've got Wharton and Burke who are good defensive mid players. The defense is a bit dodgy and the keeper. But midfield and attack wise, we should be able to dominate this game. Let's get into it and hopefully win. Chance for Burnley again. Crossed in. Yep. Yeah, we're fucked. I mean, our centre back's given that away for no reason. Yeah, I don't think we're winning this game. Whatever. I'm ready to bin off Carabao Cup anyway. I mean, I'm not risking fitness reasons to play a shit team against Brighton. Won a ball just before the half. And that's us out of the cup. Um, yeah, whatever. Who cares? We're, we're not going to win the cup anyway because we'll bottle it away from home in the second league in the fucking semi final anyway. Nice ball. Stings. Off he goes. Stings. Still going. Stings. Still going. How do we not score? Fucking hell. Larios, Alcaraz, Alcaraz still, Sufar, what are we doing? There's some of the most brain dead play I've ever seen. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, just ban it. Just ban it. Fucking shit, mate. Honestly, that ball into Larios' ass, ball into Alcaraz's ass, Alcaraz passes it backwards. Just cross it in, man. Oh my god, bro. Nice ball, Pedro's in behind, Mara misses. Like, who? I don't know what you want from me. Mara's not going to score a tap in. He's not going to score a tap in. Nothing I can do about that. Stings doesn't go. Stings goes to the other, other side. Yeah, nah, brilliant. Like, what are we doing? Stings, what are we doing? Hudson Adoy scores, but he's offside. Like, Sufal looks offside. I don't know if he is. Oh, we scored. Well done, guys. You know, it would have been free all right now if Mara's could score a tap in and, and someone tapped in the Stings cross. It'd be free all. You foul to cross it in. To know what are you? Just cross the ball in. What is actually wrong with these fucking players? Oh my lord. And that's game over. Like, Jesus Christ. Who are you passing it to? Oh my god. This it's this is exactly like this is the obviously a weaker side. And Stings is injured. Fucking excellent. Go walk players by players by right wing. Um this is the B team, but it's the same performance against Bournemouth. Absolutely shocking in the final third, not taking our chances and defending like fucking idiots. What is that pass? Another shocking display in front of goal. Shocking display. Why are we so bad in the final third at the moment? That is dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. I'm kind of glad I'm out of the cup. I've got no interest in trying to get far because we're not going to win it. I don't trust this team at all. So the transfer window's over. There's been nothing else to do. So now it's just time to play games. And I'm already pissed. It's an excellent start. All right, we play Brighton at home. Brighton have had a good start. They're sitting third. We're obviously slipped down a tenth because we're bottling it every time. Obviously, no Bazunu, so we have Lucas in again. He's going to play shit, so we have to score more goals than we concede. Uh, we're going to have to score like four today. Pedro starts. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I've got to say. Nice doy, Alcaraz. Hudson Adoy. Nice ball, to Alcaraz. Alcaraz, can you play it across? Montero! Pedro! He strikes 10 minutes into his Premier League starting debut. I think. Did he come off the bench last time? I can't remember. Come on, baby. That's what we need from our striker, our number nine. Lamptey coming forward for Brighton. Yeah, it's in. Our keeper's not going to do anything. Bazunu comes and collects that. Yeah, this is going to be a fucking long time when Bazuna's out. Why? Nah, 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 nah. This team just does the dumbest shit. That is never a pass that anyone would ever make at any professional level. If you're going to make that pass, you'd put it in the air. That is ridiculous. Oh my god, pay it to the keeper, Collins. Fucking Christ. Oh my god! This this team is doing my fucking head in. What are, what are the fuck are we doing? This is just ridiculous. I can't stand this. I can't stand this shit. Oh my lord, man! You we just love to give goals away. <sighs> fucking hell, bro! Yeah, just score another one. Just have the game dead to rights at this point. Fucking hell! This is atrocious. There you go. And we've lost again due to our own shit defending. Fucking hell, this team. 14 shots conceded. A fucking disgrace. We're just fucking around, man. Genuinely. Oh, fuck off. You're a bunch of fucking idiots. I'm over this. Now, this is the last game. I've had enough.
I'm fucking over it. Nah, can't be. I can't be asked. I genuinely can't be fucking bothered. Can't be fucking bothered with this team. This is just stupid. It's just stupid. I'm not playing anymore. Can't be fucking bothered. No, no, no. This is just fucking brain dead. We could have. Kubo could have ran line. Could have done something. Now cut back in. Charles fucks around as usual. Loses it. We give away a fucking red card. It's ridiculous. This is just a bunch of fucking idiots playing football at this point. It's just stupid. I can't believe this team. It's always the same thing. You get like, you know, you have a good window. We had a great window. We brought in some great players. And then they just do dumb. I don't, how is our keeper playing a 7.3? They've had like seven shots on target today. They've scored three. How, that's not possible. This team simply does the dumbest shit. Like I've never played this game and had the team create this many errors for themselves. It is, it is actually mind blowing this team. And it looks like this season our home form isn't going to be as good as last season. We've already lost two games that we should never lose at home. We're conceding 20 shots at home, which is a disgrace. I think this season's cooked. <laughs> we all know our away form isn't going to fucking improve. Alcaraz. Alcaraz. Misses from there. Yeah. Nah, awesome. Why do we overplay this so much? Mara taps it in. This always happens as well. Whenever we're down by like two or three goals, we'll score in the last minute. Because we've wasted so many chances before. Ridiculous. You're all fucking idiots, honestly. Absolute disgrace of a performance yet again. I can't even be bothered swimming to the next fucking... <laughs> the next game. This team's fucked me off today. Whatever, we're 13th. Somehow we've lost three in a row in the Prem. Should never have lost to Villa. Should never have lost to Bournemouth. Should never have lost to Brighton. Three absolute disgraceful performances. Uh, yeah, I'm fucking over it, to be honest. Get me off this game. Yeah, that's it. There you go. We're fucking 13th. Uh, we haven't played anyone fucking good yet, and we're fucking 13th. Yeah, brilliant. We have Liverpool next, which is excellent. They'll fucking dick us with our current form. Then we have City Tottenham. With our current form, I'm not feeling confident about that. Unacceptable. Really unacceptable, but it is what it is. Hope you all enjoyed. Like, subscribe if you did. I fucking didn't enjoy, but it is what it is. Uh, see you next time. Fuck off.